Hi, I'm Todd Delaney, the General Manager here at KSL-UFM at Southeastern Louisiana University. Today I want to show you the board. Uh, it's also called the Audio Control Console and the Mixer, maybe the Desk, but in radio for the most part we call it the board. And this is what we use to control and route audio in our production room, which is where we're at today. Um, you also see this board in the control room as well. In the production room, we route audio sources, say CD players or our uh, playback machine, our, our ENCO unit, microphones, to our recording devices. That's what we do in the production room. In the control room, we take those audio sources and route them to our transmitters so they get broadcast over the air. So at least here in the production room, there's no chance of our audio going over the air. So that's one of the concerns that a lot of people tend to have. So no worries of this stuff going over the air. This is just going to our recording devices, and we can erase it a little bit later if we want. So let me show you the uh, kind of bells and whistles and kind of go over from uh, bottom left to upper right of our board in the uh, production room today. So we'll start things off. Each of these modules, we have 10 modules uh, on this board. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, each of them have pretty much identical buttons and equipments and slides and all that kind of stuff. I'll show you what, uh, what each of these things does. So first off, you have an on-off switch down here. And you can think of this as uh, plumbing, the main audio uh, uh, source coming in. And we turn that pipe on and then we pot it up, we increase the volume or the flow of that audio all the way up or maybe halfway or maybe all the way down. And again, you can turn it off, turn it on, you can have it cranked up and then still turn it off and again, no, nothing flows because it has to be turned on before you can pot it up and have that volume, uh, that audio source uh, flow through the, uh, through the board. Uh, sticking with that analogy, uh, once you do have audio going up, um, I'll step back really quickly. Uh, on In radio, for the most part, the convention has it that the announcer's mic is always all the way over to the left. So in this case, here's my announcer mic, and this is located on the, uh, the module all the way to the left. So I've turned it on, I've potted it up, and now you can see my VU meters there. I think you can see that. The uh, VU meters are now moving as I talk into the microphone. If I pot this down, the volume goes down on the VU meter. In fact, I've potted it down all the way. And I can keep on talking and increase it a little bit and finally raise it all the way up and now I'm really, really loud. So let me uh, pot that down to a decent level. Usually we like to have our VU meters hit right around the, the middle level right there, right around that zero. I don't think you can see it right now, but uh, that's where you want your peaks, for the most part, to hit right around that zero mark. So that looks like some pretty good levels right here. Um, let me go ahead and uh, move this out the way. I'll pot it down, turn it off, and uh, so again, this is the main audio source coming in. It has four branches up here as well, and they're labeled P, 1, 2, and 3. The P stands for program or program channel, and that's our live channel. And uh, when our audio is turned on, potted up, assigned to the program channel, uh, it branches off to our recording devices. So in this case, our program uh, channel goes to all the recording devices, Adobe Audition, our flash recorder, any recording uh, device that we have is fed by that program channel. So that's the live important channel uh, of our board here in the production room. We also have again three other branches, Auxiliary 1, Auxiliary 2, and Auxiliary 3. And Auxiliary 1 goes to something called the distribution amp. The uh, number 2, Auxiliary number 2, goes to some remote equipment. So if we're doing remote broadcasts, um, people in the field can hear what we're doing back here at the radio station. Auxiliary number 3 is not hooked up, so it doesn't go anywhere. There's also a fifth channel, so that's uh, four channels, program channel, auxiliary one, auxiliary two, auxiliary three. A fifth channel is this Q channel down here as well. And what that does, it takes the audio and routes it not to a distribution amp or to a recording device, but rather it routes it to this little speaker right here in the bottom of the board. So that's uh, pretty much what we're, uh, we're looking at with all of this. There's also another button right here uh, labeled TB for talk back and that's not hooked up so you don't have to worry about it so keeping it simple here other interesting thing about uh, each of these modules is that they have a CNG button which stands for change and uh, what I can do it really kinda adds a level of versatility to uh, to each of these modules so for example if uh, right here on this module module number six I'm looking and it says PRCD1 well, that stands for production room, which is where we're at right now. 
CD player number one. So PRCD1 means the CD player number one in the production room. And that happens to be this one over here. If I turn that on and pot it up, I can play audio through that. And there we go. So now it's turned on, pot it up, assigned, assigned to the program channel. And now it's being routed uh, to our recording devices. And you can also hear it through the loudspeakers. I can also turn it off pot it down and hit it hit the uh, Q channel as well and route it to the little speaker in the back. Again, I'll tell you why, why so, he's my brand new man. Playing through the little speaker right there, the uh, Q speaker. No games, no he came from. So going back to the versatility of it, if I hit that change button, I can uh, change the audio source. So if I hit change, it brings up a menu over here. And it says, what would you like to assign, uh, what audio source would you like to assign to module number six? So I currently have it at PRCD player number one, but I can also change it to, say, ENCO. So let me change that. So I dialed it up with the select knob. Again, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So hit the change button, bring the select knob over to PR ENCO 4, and hit the take button right there. And now it changed from PRCD1 to our ENCO 4, which is our ENCO, uh, our ENCO machine. And here we go, we can hit play, and there we go, we're playing uh, music from ENCO on the same module. But we can easily change it back as well. So let me stop that, hit the change button, put it back to PRCD1, and now it's playing the CD player again, PRCD1. Okay, being a dead horse there, but let's move on. What else do you need to know? So we've got the change button, we've got the program channel, we've got aux 1, we've got aux 2, we've got the Q channel, talk back, TB doesn't work. Uh, we turn things on, we pot them up, and we call it potting it up because it's, uh, this is a potentiometer, potentiometer, and uh, pot uh, is just short for potentiometer. So you pot things up, you pot things down, potentiometer. Uh, what else do you need to know? VU meters, uh, again, you want to hit your peaks right around that zero dB mark. That's too loud, and that's probably too soft, so right around there looks pretty good. So again, hit your peaks right around that zero dB mark, you'll be good. Let's see. So what do we do? Let's, let's do this. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you, the important bits about the Q channel, is that you can listen to uh, listen to audio sources while other uh, while other things may be uh, recording to recording devices. So let's do that. Let's play CD player number one and record it to well, Adobe Audition. So we pop that down a little bit so we get some good levels. And now that CD player is recording to Adobe Audition. Well, what happens if I'm looking in my Enco system? and see the song is like, ah, is that the one? I, let me listen to this and see if I can, see if that's the song I'm thinking about. To do that without, without it going into my recording, without the uh, song playing at the same time as my CD player, I can push uh, the Q channel and listen to that song in the Q channel. So I push the Q channel, hit play, and with my Q volume over here, I can listen through the little speaker. Little oh yeah, that is it. That was the song I was thinking about. So it's not being recorded into Adobe Audition, um, but I was able to listen to it and just kind of confirm that yes, that's the song I was thinking about. So um, that's kind of helpful whenever you're doing stuff behind the scenes, stuff that's not going over the air. Um, you can listen to audio sources that way. The Q channel is pretty helpful in, in that regard. Go ahead and stop my recording. Um, actually, let me keep that going. I'm going to stop uh, Adobe Audition over here. And while we have good levels going, my uh, my monitor section comes in uh, into play. And down here at the bottom right, we've got what's labeled monitor, and that controls the monitor speakers, the loudspeakers. So if I turn this up. We can dance if we want to. We can leave your friends behind. Because your friends don't dance. And if they don't dance, well, they're no friends of mine. Okay, not exactly sure what happened there. But here we go. We're going to go over the monitor section right now. So I'm looking at my monitor speakers. As I play my music, I can control the monitor speakers or the loudspeakers. 
uh, right here without in impacting my level that I'm uh, actually recording at. So let me play my music. So you got to turn it on, pot it up. Well, been Decent levels. Let's say I didn't want to listen to this song while it plays and records into Adobe Audition. I can just turn the monitor volume down like that. Still, it's uh, going at the same level. So I haven't adjusted the levels nor the recording level that uh, it's being recorded at. But I have adjusted the volume of the uh, loudspeakers. So I could crank it up. Turn it down. Again, doesn't impact the recording level. So just monitoring it. It doesn't impact that, uh, that level that we're routing through the board. Got it? Okay, let's move on. Um, what else do we got? We got the headphone volume. Basically the same thing as a monitor, but for your headphones. We got six different uh, input jacks for your uh, headphones. So six people could be, be in here with uh, six different pairs of headphones. And listen right there. And this controls the volume of the uh, headphones. Uh, studio, not hooked up. Don't worry about it. Q channel controls the volume again of the Q, uh, Q speaker down at the bottom. And uh, that's pretty much it. We got a little select knob up here. We got the take button. If you want to change something, you, you can do that. Um, one of the interesting things that you could do with the uh, monitor section is change what you monitor. So we were listening to the uh, CD player, but over here I can press the change button on my monitor and it pulls up again another menu. And I can select, for example, KSLU Air and hear what's going over the air right now. So let's select that and hit take. And there we go. So we got the events calendar playing right now on the radio station. Uh, I can hit change and go back. Back to listening to the CD, so let's do that. And we're listening again to the CD. And again, notice we didn't touch the uh, this module over here. So if we were recording, that would have been uh, seamless. We wouldn't have uh, impacted the recording at all. So there you go. Uh, so monitor, headphones, studio cue, the select knob, take, cancel. Uh, these aren't hooked up. Nothing's hooked up over there. So you don't have to worry about that. And that's essentially the, uh, the board. So hope, uh, hopefully that was a little insightful and um, a little enlightening as well. We'll have more tutorials in uh, just a bit.